Hello everyone, this is Double 20 and welcome to episode 73 of MC Eternal, uh, where today I think I'm going to go on some adventuring. I think we've been playing in our base a little bit long enough. Uh, I think it's time for an adventure. Uh, so, so looking at what we're doing, right? Let's 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 recap where we're at. Uh, and I'm just going to collect a bunch of coin rewards. Hooray! All the rewards. Uh, looking at where we're at, right? Among many things that I want to do in this mod pack, because there is just... I, I like the name MC Eternal, because there are so many mods with so much content in this mod pack, you really can play forever. I feel like there's still lots of things I haven't done and haven't looked at. Like, we've still barely ramped up on technology, right? We still have to, like, ramp up our mechanism stuff and all this other stuff, right? So, yeah, there's literally a million things to do in this pack, right? So, um... I think the next thing I want to do is, uh, the main focus of right now, like I was saying, was I'd like to unlock, uh, in the Unlockables chapter, Diamond Seeds. Now, a few people commented, why did you waste time doing the farming chapter to get Gold Seeds when you could have just gotten the Gold Seeds from Agricraft? And the same can be said for Diamond Seeds, right? I can make I can make the Diamantine the, 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 what, Seeds, whatever those are. Uh, one of these guys produces it. I don't even know which. Uh, diamond seeds. These guys. Dia Amalia seeds, right? So we could breed a couple different seeds and get diamond seeds, which we can agricraft to 10, 10, 10. But I don't want to. I, that's the answer that I have for you right now. I want to do this. I want, I want these seeds. I don't want those seeds. I want these seeds. I... That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the answer. Uh, I want to do this, right? Because I'm having fun going through all the quests, completing all the objectives, and and it, like it's it's more of a challenge, right? Like yes, I could take the short easy path to get the Diamala seeds, but a this is a YouTube series where I'm trying to entertain an audience, right? So people want to see me doing fun things and adventuring and 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 completing tasks and objectives, and b it's more fun for me to 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 go through Twilight Forest and and uh, and Batania and Thongcraft and, and unlock all these features, right? And it gives me uh, a nice goal to work towards, which is also fun for me. So uh, in order to unlock the Diamond Seeds, we have to complete this whole chapter, right? Now, I've done a bunch of stuff last episode. I'm not going to be doing that all again today, right? I'll probably be completing a lot of these things off camera, right? So it's just it's just literally like making the Vibrant Alloy Seeds and then, and then getting the Essence, right? And some of these whatever I deem necessary, I will probably wind up uh, planting outside so we can have a lot of them, right? I don't know if we need thousands and thousands of vibrant alloy. I don't know. Maybe, right? We did get enderman seeds, right? So I should probably... I, I might want those, right? I'm going to put them in my to-do list chest over here, right? Uh, so let's scan them so we remember that one, one, one. Right now I'm working on wood seeds... <laughs> because I constantly fail at making a tree farm in this pack. So I'm like, you know what? I give up. I'm not making a tree farm. I'm just going to make 10, 10, 10 wood seeds. And then, and then we'll turn our wood essence into oak wood. And that'll be the end of it, right? Now we've got wood. <laughs> uh, and then enderman seeds, right? Like, that'll be cool because we'll have access to, like, lots of ender pearls. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking here, actually. I don't see many ender pearls. Oh, that's because I searched for enderman. That's why. Yeah, so ender pearls, we still, we don't have a ton, right? So maybe some enderman seeds wouldn't be a bad idea. We'll see. Uh, but the plan for today, I think, is Twilight Forest. I think that would be fun. And I have, I have a plan for going to the Twilight Forest and doing interesting. Um... What I, what somebody commented, and I, I forget who it was, so I apologize. Somebody commented, wouldn't it be fun to go through Twilight Forest strictly magic-based? So get rid of all your tech, right? So get rid of your Ender Sword, get rid of your Flux Bore, bring your Magic Wand, get rid of your Armor and Jetpack, and we'll use, um, we'll use, we'll use, like, uh, the, the, the Electro Blobs Wizardry mod, and we'll use Astral Sorcery, and we'll go straight up, uh, Wizard-based, right? And we'll, we'll go there as a, as a, as a mage. So I thought that might be cool. I thought that might be fun. Yeah, we could totally try that out. Uh, so let's do that. What do you think? Uh, so looking at Astral, right? I think that's what I'm going to do. And that'll give me an excuse to, to do things that I don't normally do, like use the Astral gear, right? So like the top tier Astral gear under the Radiance chapter, we can get some cool stuff like the Mantle of the Stars. And there's lots of Mantle of the Star upgrades we can do. So I think it would be fun to do that, right? And then there's also, like, some wand attunements that we can maybe look at. I don't know. I honestly don't play with these much. Because usually by the time I get to Astral Sorcery, I've got such powerful tech gear that there's not much of a reason to do that. So, 
by coming up with the concept of going purely magical for Twilight Forest adventure, that could be neat. And I think I want to try that. So we're going to make a Mantle of the Stars. We're going to make a couple of wands. We're going to bring our wand uh, from Electro Blob's Wizardry. Uh, may... We'll see about the, the sword and the flux bore. Like, I don't know how much of a benefit it would be to, to do that, but we'll see. We'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, so let me come back in a few minutes after I look at the Mantle of the Stars and decide which upgrades I want to apply to it, because uh, basically each constellation can apply a Mantle effect, uh, which is pretty cool. And I I don't even know, because that's just how rarely I do this. I don't know if it's just the Majors or if the Minors have it as well. I want to say there's just Major constellations that affect the Mantle, right? Um... Or maybe we won't come back. Maybe I'll just show you guys what all they are, and we can decide. We'll do it live. Uh, so this one, right? This is uh, this is Evorcio. So this is the destructuring one. This is the one that usually, you know, breaks materials, right? So this is the one that um, breaks any blocks in in its area, right? Uh, the infused cloak enhances your destructive potential, allowing you to break down walls with ease and severely damage hordes of enemies when one of them dies from your hand while in proximity to others. Sounds cool. Uh, Decidia, right? This is the one that uh, you know we usually use for killing withers, right? Uh, damaging field in the area. Once infused with this constellation's light, a mantle will draw strength from your enemy's blows, empowering your own against them. Once hit, the wearer gains a portion of the damage taken as additional damage to be dealt with each hit. Oh, I mean, that sounds kind of cool. I'm just saying. Maybe. Abetus. This is usually the this is the one we used for crop growth, right? Bathed in the power of creation, you find your hunger recovers with an emanated aura of healing. Furthermore, plants will twist to your essence when within close proximity, changing into others of their kind. That's interesting, but not what I'm looking for. Vicio, this is the one that, uh, you know, gives you movement increases. Uh, eases the burn by reducing your weight enough to ride the currents of the wind, allowing you to fly like one would with an elytra. All right, that's neat. That's neat. Cool. Armara, this is usually the defense one, so this probably has some kind of shielding. A mantle infused with this constellation's light will slowly collect it over time, manifesting into protective barriers which can completely deflect attacks as, for as long as the barrier remains. Well, that's pretty cool. So there's defensive or offensive. That's really what I need to decide, right? Uh, oh, miners do have an effect. Wearing a mantle attuned to this constellation causes flares to flock to you, following you in your travels and aiding you in combat. Ooh, that's cool. Mineralis uh, finds itself drawn to sought materials, allowing the wearer to determine the nearby location of the currently held block. All right, that's cool, but not what I'm looking for, right? Lucerna, this is the light one. Simply wearing a mantle infused with this constellation's light will uh, unsettle mobs around you, revealing their location. Areas where mobs may be summoned in great numbers by magical cages see exceptional reactions. That's kind of cool. That would allow you to find dungeons. Horologium, uh, let's see, wearers of this mandal attuned to time are able to freeze everything nearby when being attacked or in a dangerous situation. There is a delay before time can be so abruptly disturbed again, however. Due to the starlight interactions with Fornax, fire damage will not trigger this effect. Hmm, well that's kind of cool. You can freeze everything nearby when you're being attacked. I wonder if it's like a hotkey. Is there a hotkey for this? Let's see, controls, category... I don't think I don't think Astral Sorcery has any hotkeys. Yeah, I don't see anything. So I'm thinking no hotkey. So it's probably like when you get attacked, it freezes enemies around you. That's cool. I just want to kind of flip through these and see what they all are about, right? Uh, so Octans, uh, one protecting from knockback attacks, granting underwater breathing, and allowing handling of tools like there was no water at all. Nice, but not what we're after. Fornax. Uh, fire regenerates your flesh rather than scorching it. Furthermore, while also wearing flame itself, the heat is, is, is channeled into the ground you stand on, either burning or melting it down entirely. Oh, that's kind of cool. Pelotrio. A mantle infused with this constellation's light will often manifest starlight into animated tools, mimicking the wearer's behavior when breaking blocks with a pickaxe, chopping down trees with an axe, or even striking enemies with weapons. That's interesting. Um... That's cool. I need to look into some of these. Now, I'm assuming these guys don't have a mantle effect, right? Yes. So the the so so major and minor constellations have mantle effects, but dim ones obviously don't. So really the question is um I'm thinking it's it's either going to be Amara, which will be the shielding one, or we could do either Avorcio or Decidia. I'm I'm leaning towards Decidia. Um this is the one that said you get more strength from your enemies' blows. All right. So uh, I have a couple plans. 
I have a couple plans. It's going to be a little shenanigans, but I actually decided there is a weapon I want to get in place of my sword. I want to try the infused crystal sword. Because I think we can make a really OP sword. I'm just saying, I think we can make a really OP sword. We're going to have a little bit of fun. Shall we? Does that sound fun? Does that sound cool? Does that sound cool? All right, so let's get to work, right? Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is make the infused crystal sword, right? So in order to make this, I need to infuse it uh, a regular crystal sword, which is made in a luminous crafting table with any rock crystals, I assume. Does it matter? It looks like it matters. So there's a size and purity attribute. So I think it matters. So let's get... I don't even know where I left off up here. I assume... Yes, you were running. Okay, cool. Good times. So you... You, sir, have a lot going on, don't you? Yes, you do. And you're... This is a full size, but this is not. So what I should do... Did you guys split? Is that what happened? How did that even happen? Uh, Alright, cool and cool and cool and cool. Alright, neat, neato burrito. So we have a lot... We have a lot of work to do here. Uh, but here's a perfect crystal. So what I'm gonna do is... Th so this one's perfect, perfect? He is. Cool. Let me get... This one... We have to get some that we have to cut. Let's see how awesome we can make this weapon. I don't know what the actual changes will be, but we'll find out. So that is that. So that's actually ready to be grown. You need some cutting. more cutting good good perfect all right so let's put you guys here and I'm hopeful actually I don't know what you're doing so that would be this is the one I want to drop in there for the moment perfect okay And let's get some more aquamarines, of which we should have many. Ha 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 See what I did there? Just, you know, being ready. With nigh infinite aquamarines. We'll probably have a lot of... Because remember, I'm, I'm using aquamarines to make the essence. Which I could probably stop at this point. So, in order to stop this, what I'm going to do is just come down here and take this off here and take these away. Cool. So now he will no longer be inserting these dudes. And what we'll find is when they break the fully grown aquamarine plants, that would be cool. Okay. And then just to clean up what is absolutely going to be a messy applied energistic system if I don't, let's convert all these into actual aquamarines. Holy cow, that is a lot of aquamarines. I hope I'm storing aquamarines in a drawer that has voiding on it. Yes, I am! 2048 aquamarines. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I, you gotta pay attention to what you're doing with applied energistic storage, right? Because if you don't, you're gonna have just a big old mess that is gonna be a problem. And it eats up your storage space, right? So don't waste it. Perfect. Okay, good times. So that's all cleaned up. So now let's get up here, and hopefully you've made a perfect crystal for me by now. Uh, nope, you have work to do. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. There you go, buddy. And Oh, good, we do have another perfect crystal. Good, good, good. Okay, cool. And then you need some more cutting going on. So let me fix that. Good. And good. All right, cool. Now over here, I believe we just need a normal stick. And now we can get this guy and get him made. Let's see how ridiculous we can make this sword. So that's cool. So that gave me uh, size 1800, purity looks good. 24, all right, cool. Durability 10, huh? All right, interesting. I'm not super familiar with the with the crystal tools and how all they all work, but we're gonna find out. 
We're going to see how good we can make this thing. Because I feel like it could be pretty good. Wow, he he ate all the liquids, didn't he? <laughs> that's cool, though. Uh, so his durability is still 10 out of 10, so I don't know what that's about. But we're going to find out. Uh, what do we got around here? Can we make it nighttime again? That would be cool. And we're going to take you... I want to find, like, a nice easy mob to kill. Hello! Woo! Look at that! That is cool beans. So A, this thing does really good damage. And B, it apparently explodes with a really bright light when you swing the weapon. And I'm not done yet. But I am one-shotting dudes like nobody's business. Holy cow, how much damage in total? Yeah, I know, buddy. Watch this. Goodbye, rats. Hold on. Got you. Got you. Alright, maybe not that good. That's why we have a backup. Yeah. So, I mean, that's definitely doing 20 damage for a shot right there. When it's charged. See the cooldown on my hotbar? You can see the cooldown happen when I use it. Man, that is just a whole bunch of cool beans, ain't it? Boom! Nice. I like it. Now, here's the thing to note. I'm noticing that the cutting is going down. So is that my durability? I don't know. Uh, and I wonder if I can, like, put this over here. Right. Now, what I might want to do is stop you from doing things. But can I... If I do that, does that improve the cutting? It does. So that got me back up to 100% cutting. Now the question is... I might need to turn my magnet off for a sec. Hang on. Right, now we put these dudes back. The question is, will that thing grow? Interesting. So, yes, it absorbed the liquid, but then the cutting went way down. So I don't know what the deal is with that. And I mean, I can always make another one of these if I need to, but I'd want to understand this, this mechanic. So what I think I'll do is get a bucket and do this manually for a minute. Really? All right, so 1729, I'm gonna drop it in there and we're gonna see what happens, All right? All right, so it just absorbed. So now let's see what our stats are at. All right, so the size went all the way up and cutting, so one bucket, totally, okay, interesting. So I think we wanna keep this thing sharp, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a super knowledgeable dude, but I feel like cutting is probably important to the, to the tool, right? So we'll keep it sharp and then we'll see, it looks like we can at least repair it. So like what we'll do is we'll keep cutting it and then when it gets low on a size, we can drop it in crystal to fill it back up. And I think that'll work. So that works for me. It may not always be perfect, but it'll be good, right? So the other thing I wanna do now is look into another rarely used item from Astral Sorcery, uh, and that is the Stellar Refraction Table. Uh, so which chapter is that in? Is that this guy? Yeah, there he is. Yeah. So we have to look into Stellar Refraction Table. Let me look into this guy, because I think we can do some pretty shenanigans stuff with this. If I'm not mistaken, we can do some pretty shenanigans level stuff with this. So let me see what we got going on. Stellar Refraction Table. So you're gonna need Star Metal Ingots and Resonating Gems. Good, we do have some Resonating Gems. We might have a few more things here. Uh, what else we got? Uh, some Ruined Marbles, any kind of die, and an Infused Wood Column. Which looks easy-ish enough.
And we might have a few of these in here. We don't really. All right, no problem. Can I use... Does this have to be made in here? It might. Am I, am I, am I crazy here? Like, what's going on? Infused wood planks. Oh, maybe that's why. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So we need four of these, right? Okay, so that's that. So then we just need the ruined marble and any kind of die. So lapis should work, right? Works for me. Nighttime, please. Stellar refraction table can be used to apply enchants to tools, but I think we can get higher than our standard enchants. I'm just saying. I feel like we can get higher than our standard enchants. So I, I, I'm not 100% sure how this works. So maybe we should test this with like a normal sword for a minute. Like I'm just gonna get like a, I don't know, like a regular old iron sword and we'll like test the stellar refraction table and understand how it works. Look how fancy. Look how fancy it is. It's so fancy. Uh, before we get too deep into it, cool? So the stellar refraction table. Um, a table can now be created that can accommodate all of the known constellations and through a series of refractive panes, focus that light into a central working area so that the starlight can imbue enchantments. Due to the strength of this focus, it is likely it may potentially exceed all other known levels of enchanting. Hint, -dee, hint, hint. The table seems to be able to work with up to three different constellations at once before the overlapping luminescence results in too much light pollution. The table seems to require the deep cover of night to work best, eliminating other sources of interfering light from the sky. Okay. The placement of the constellations seems to have a great impact as to their dominance in the final pattern. The fewer overlapping points from each constellation, the stronger their presence will be in the final drawing. All right, seems cool. Reinforcing paper with aquamarine's ability to absorb starlight has allowed the creation of specialized parchment that should be able to contain the constellation inscribed on the table. A specialized type of glass to hold the enchanting properties of the constellation will be required. Building on the altered nature of colored lenses and further joining star metal and resonating gems, a glass could be made that is both strong and receptive enough to transfer the starlight enchantments. I think you can make potions with this, is what that's saying. By placing the paper and infused glass on the table and directing the focus of the constellations on the paper, a new interconnected master constellation is created on the page. Too much light interference, such as dawn or dusk approaching, increases the chance the parchment will be unable to handle such raw energy and burn. Once all three constellations have been placed onto the paper without burning the pattern, will become etched into infused glass. All right. The final enchantment step involves directing the new pattern of constellations onto something enchantable. A book should certainly be able to retain the enchantments, as would most armors and weapons, as long as the enchantments are appropriate for them. Finally, it should also be possible to bottle these enchantments. That's the part that's talking about. So that's a lot of flavor text. Let me figure out how this actually works. All right, so I think this is how this works. You ready? Think first we need infused glass, which is gonna need resonating gems, stardust, and some lenses which hopefully ain't too bad. Let's see, Stardust. Let's just do all astral. Resonating gems. I got a colored lens, well that's cool. It's regular lenses, that's cool. Okay, so infused glass. Hooray. Maybe? doing the thing. Man, time flies. Look how fast time goes. I just made it nighttime. All right, and I believe this goes on the table. And then I think we need parchment. And that goes on the table. And now, what? Oh, hello. How's it going? Uh, so now we can drag our constellations in, and these will affect what enchants go onto this glass, I think. Uh, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing here a little bit. Uh, but that's the gist of what I understand, right? Like, we put that in there. Um, 
and 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 if we look in the book we'll figure out what those enchants can be um so like let's start with Dissidia, because that's going to clearly probably be strength or sharpening, right? So if I want to sharpen this sword, right, and we want to put sharpening something on there, right, what we're going to want to do is do Dissidia, okay? So let's find Dissidia. Ooh. Okay, that's cool. Now I think... Can I put like multiples on there? How's this work? I'm kind of just winging it. Oh, hello. Engraved glass, Dissidia. Okay. So that did a thing. So we got some engraved glass with just Dissidia on it. Okay. So now I think I can put a book in there. Now I don't know if it has to be like a writable book or, oh, hello. Things are happening. Okay. That's cool. And the city is in the sky, so that's probably a good time. Oh, hello. Hello there, Sharpness7. <laughs> oh, hello, Power7. Uh, yeah, I'd like I'd like one of each, please. I would I would actually like a few of these, please. Can I have more? Can I have more books? Now, apparently this glass will eventually weaken and break, so we should keep that in mind. So shift right click to remove the book, right click to insert the book. So that's definitely going on my sword. It'll probably go on my ender, uh, and I'll probably put it on one of my bows like this dude. Could have power seven, would be nice, right? And I wanna say that's the best that we can get is power seven. But like clearly we can get some better stuff from some of the stuffs. So that's kind of neat. I like that. I like that a lot. That is cool. And and I think having the constellation in the sky helps. Now, I don't know if it matters if the constellation's in the sky at the moment that we create the refraction table. Oh, look at that, it does. It does take durability damage. Okay, cool. So that's neat. So now I should be able to remove this and put this away for future use, but that's pretty spiffy. So, okay, neat. Neat-o burrito. All right, so we've got that. Oh my god, the city is still in the sky. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it matters if it's in the sky at the time or what. But let's go apply this enchant to my fancy new sword. Cool. So you get this for 35 levels. I mean, I feel like I've got such a stupid amount of levels it doesn't even matter. But let's see. Is this book full? He's pretty stinking full. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Hello, Sharpness7. <laughs> oh man, that is beautiful right there. That is beautiful. I'm excited about that. So that thing was already doing a stupid amount of damage and now he's got Sharpness7. I mean, can we, are we cool with that? I like that. So what else might I wanna put on this thing? I don't know, we'll see, we'll see, we'll figure it out, right? But ultimately speaking, that's pretty cool. Um, I might want to make one that does like a nice protection because our Mara will give me like protection up to five, it looks like. Uh, so that's pretty nifty. So I might put that on my mantle. So we've got a really nice sword here. What about a bow? What kind of ranged weapons can I do? Does Astral have a bow? It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, Batania has a bow. I don't know how, how good it is comparably to other things, but... You know, we'll see. We'll see about getting some kind of magical-based ranged attack. I mean, I do have, obviously, wands, so that helps. We'll probably look into how to do that. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm, I, like, I need, to, I need to find a way to test how much damage this does. Because I don't even know how to test that. Right? We need to find something that we can damage. Like, is there a dummy? Isn't there, like, a... There, there was a mod a while back, and I don't even know if I've used it in forever. Um that you could have, like, a dummy that you could, like, hit. I mean, I suspect that all I'm gonna see here is 20 damage. Yeah. 
Because what happens is... It's just 20 damage because... I don't know how much damage that did. We just killed him in one shot. He has... He has more than... He doesn't have more than 20 health, so we can't really measure that. We need to find, like, an enemy that can take more than 20 damage. Some kind of boss, like a wither or something. Like, how about you, buddy? I mean, that did 30 in one shot. So that was cool. Uh, I wish I could find, like, one of those, like, named vampire dudes. Or something that has a lot of health. Would be cool. Just so we can, like, test how much damage this thing does. And that was 25, right? That is super cool. Alright, we'll figure it out. But we've got a really good weapon now. Let's look at making the mantle. I'm gonna try it on this Enderman. Yeah, we one-shot an Enderman. How much health does an Enderman typically have? Ah, ah, I killed them all! <laughs> that is beautiful, friends. Beautiful. Loving it. Alright, so the ridiculous enchanting is good. I like this. I like this. See, I told you told you astral sorcery is fun because it's a little OP sometimes and that's the best. All right, let's make a mantle of the stars, right? So what we're going to want is a mantle that's going to be under the, um, did we say Dissidia constellation? Is that the one we want? There were two that did damage. Uh, Evorcio, I think, um, hordes of enemies when one of them dies from your hand while in proximity to the others. Right? Um, and then Dissidia, as you take damage, your strength builds up. And then your next hit does a lot of damage. I think that's how that works. Um, you know what else I should do? I should follow some perks. I should get some... some. So Dissidia, 10% added to critical hit, gain experience by dealing damage. I mean, that sounds pretty cool, right? Uh, some increased melee and projectile damage. Now, I don't think I can get here right right away but what i could do is start working in this direction right so what we could do increase mining speed increase mining speed increase melee damage well that's cool right um and then just like work our way over here increased effectiveness of perks increase effectiveness of perks increase perk experience gain and then what i'll do three percent of damage dealt gained as life oh i kind of like that Plus two added to maximum health. I like this. Eight percent increased melee. And, oh, that's nice. I'll take both of those. Thank you. Adds a chance to gain increased speed, attack speed, and damage after killing an enemy. We're gonna go on a rampage. <laughs> so cool. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this. I can't wait. All right, mantle of the stars time. So uh, we said Dissidia, right? That's the that's the mantle we chose. Uh, Dissidia. And we'll continue leveling up, and we'll get a bunch of damage perks too. And that'll be fun. All right, let me get uh, the required components for the Dissidia enchant. So that means we're going to have to get a basic mantle of the stars. So we'll be right back. So one thing I want to make is a containment chalice. Uh, because this will make it easier to do the infusing thing. Uh, now this one's going to need, I believe, five aquamarines. Yep, hello. One... I do love this enchanting, uh, this crafting process. It's, it's pretty much my favorite. I mean, it's super cool, right? Very reminiscent of the Thongcraft crafting. Which we will also be getting into in the series. Because that's we need some Thaumia more, right? So we're going to be doing Thongcraft 2 at some point. So yeah, this episode and next episode will likely be prepping for our travel to the Twilight Forest. Then we'll do some Twilight Forest exploration. And that'll be cool. Um... Let me get some mechanism fluid pipes here. Mechanical pipes, I think, is what I want. Yes. Hello, thank you, sir. Now, did any of you get disturbed with the last little crafting I did? No. Good, good, good. All right, so you. This is the part where you have fluid in you. Right? Isn't that, isn't that what happens here? Okay. Uh, can I just put you, like, there? Hello, Containment Chalice. How are you? Good to see you. Now, explain to me why there's literally no fluid coming through here. 
Because that I don't understand. That makes literally Starlight two millibuckets. So you guys accumulating here, or what's the deal? Mechanisms, fluid pipes, and astral fluids don't seem to want to behave. Am I crazy about that, or is it just me? They were being weird before, weren't they, in a previous episode? So what I might do... What I might do, just because it'll look better anyway, let's replace you... Let's replace you with another kind of fluid pipe. Um, fluid ducts, maybe? But I'll probably need hardened, I would imagine, right? Uh, let's get the glass that we need. We're running late in this episode, aren't we? More than likely. Fused quartz. Get me a bunch of that, would you? Thank you. And then some servos. One more would be ideal if I could. Of course I can't. Killing me, smalls. We don't have any of the things we need for this. Dyer neglecting his automations and then complains when he doesn't have the things that he needs. Also, 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 I really need to fix that. Actually, a couple things are broken. We're gonna have to figure it all out. All the things are broken! See? Yeah, weirdness. Weirdness to be sure. So let's try hardened fluid duct and see if you guys behave better. Ignored, ignored, ignored. And then we will do hardened fluid ducts this way. And then the chalice. And that should be cool. Pretty sure you can you can pipe into the bottom of the chalice, can't you? Pretty sure. Redstone on, redstone on, redstone on. I thought you could see how much fluid was in here, though. Am I crazy about that? And then maybe we get a tank from Thermal. And maybe we can upgrade you. You know what, I can do this with a kit. Let's just get a resonant conversion kit. And then another servo would probably be smart. Didn't I have a bunch of Electrum? I mean, I asked for more than two, didn't I? Didn't I ask for more than two? Oh, right, because we probably just used a bunch to make the the conversion kit, which is in progress. And he needs sand, obviously. So let's get some more sand for you. And we'll try that again. This time without the sand. Oh, and he needs a bucket, apparently. All right, get to work, buddy. So what I'll do is stick you How did you get water in you? Oh, I bet I know why. Uh, actually, no. I don't have an answer as to why you got water in you. How did you get water in you? Oh, from this. Aha. Thank you. Go away. Thank you. Very kind. All right. So are you storing the stuffs now or what? Because you seem to be weird. You seem to be being funny about storing astral fluids. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, no, it's not being weird. Uh, I just didn't have any. I think that's a weird visual bug there, that that looks like it has fluids in it, but it doesn't. So you're getting fluid now, and that looks fair. So then we do this and extract, and now it's draining it out, and that looks good too. I think, I think it's just rendering weird in the pipes sometimes, and I don't know what's up with that. And I could have sworn you could see how much was in here, but I guess not. So anyway, let's just get a mechanical user real quick.
right? Uh, and you're going to use item on block. Activate block with item. Cool. And then we're going to want another mechanical user. And you will equally use item on block. Yes. Perfect. Cool. And then we're going to want a vacuum chest with a, I mean, that should work, right? Stop, stop, stop. Active with signal. That's why we need a filter. That's why we need a filter. I was going to say we need a filter. And a basic one should be fine. Uh, ish. Whitelist, always active. Beautiful, cool. And that, yeah, so that's working because it's giving the starlight. So instead of picking up the liquid starlight from the pools here, it'll drain it from that. Well past the wrapping up point. So Daryl 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time. And uh, we're gonna make the mantle of the stars. We're gonna make it nice and powerful. We're gonna look into, I want movement speed boosts. So I don't know if I'm gonna do Batania or what I'm gonna do for that, but I'd love a way to run fast. Right? Because Astral only has a mantle, which goes on your chest body part. I don't know that I have a helm or legs or boots from Astral. So we're going to see if we want to do a different magic mod for that or something. But at the very least, we made a really powerful sword today. I have no idea how much damage this does. It says 17.57, but there must be some kind of multiplier when you have it charged and it's ready to swing. So we'll see. For now, Doll20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.